All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, apologies that I'm coming to you from my car. I had a little bit of a 2021 moment and my internet just decided to conveniently crash right before this. So I am coming to you live outside of a Starbucks parking lot. So this is super exciting. But anyway, the show must go on. So we have a super great panel for you guys today or this evening, afternoon, wherever you guys may be. Um, these are some of my absolute favorite, favorite people in the industry. Uh, we have Courtney Burns from Huge, Emily Ellie Shevitz from Ogilvy, Fifi Jacobs from FCB, and Sasha Martins from Sasha at the Mench. Um, we actually did a panel very similar to this in May, back in uh, our creative month. We've just only added Sasha, so it's even gotten better. But uh, I'd just like to say the unique thing about this panel is that you all should have registered with your portfolio link or a link to your website. Uh, we will be sending all of the panelists all of your information, so everybody who registered for the event. We will send that over that way. Um, if you guys do have a question, feel free to drop it in the Q&A box. We'll get to those when we can. And yeah, I'll go ahead and kick it off to Courtney. Hi, everybody. Um, we are super pumped to be back. Uh, a giant thank you to the One Club uh, for hosting this panel again. Um, and I am joined by all my friends. So there's actually nothing more fun to do on a Wednesday in the freezing cold here in New York, um, but hang out with you guys. So we are super pumped to kick this off and we're hoping that we can share some of our insights um, about how to land a summer internship um, and kind of what the, walk you through what the nature of that looks like in a pandemic in unprecedented times um, and just kind of let you know some of our tips and tricks for getting noticed, standing out um, and all of those good things. So welcome everybody to our panel. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think I wanted to kind of just start by asking all of my friends, um, you know, what is the nature of summer internships looking like? Just industry-wide, your agency, um, are there internships? Are they happening? Um, and, you know, what is it? Are there a lot of spots? All of those good things. So kind of any insights you can share of what you're hearing in the marketplace to share with everybody who's joined our panel. I'll kick it over to you, Emily. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry I grabbed it. First of all, welcome everybody. I hope everybody is doing really well. Happy Black History Month. I hope that you are celebrating yourselves and your friends and just recognizing all of the beautiful things that we have in the world. Um, I want to tell you that I too am having some computer problems. So I just see a blank screen. I'm not seeing anybody. So I might jump in unceremoniously in some of, for some of the questions just not because I'm rude, just because I can't really tell what anybody is doing. But in answer to that question, Courtney, I would say um, for Ogilvy, what I do understand is that we are in the process of revamping. Last year, we had an online internship, and that encompassed our MAPE uh, candidates and also our associates program. We blended that all together. Um, this year, we are looking to do something uh, very similar and really integrate our program in New York with the programs that are out in, uh, in Chicago and in our DC office and all of the other areas. Um, we are bringing back some things so that you, we're growing an internship program. We have brand new, really interesting, exciting CCOs, and they're looking for a certain kind of talent. So we're trying to recruit based on what they are requesting of us, but we're going to do an internship program. We're still in early days of figuring out everything. That's awesome. Um, I'm so pumped to, I'm, well, I'm so pumped to hear that internships are happening. And I know that before we started this panel, um, we were all chatting about what our respective agencies were doing. So I'm excited that at least every, every agency on this group, you know, we've got things to share. Um, so I'll turn it over to you, Fifi. What are you guys doing over at FCB? Well, we have not formally said we are doing an internship. However, that said, that's exactly what we said last year. And then we did an internship. Uh, we probably decided at the very last minute, which means that everyone who's out there who's looking for an internship, don't give up. Maybe somebody like FCB New York on May 1st will say, 
we're going to have an internship and please send us everything because it's starting on June 1st. Send us your portfolios. Um, I know that uh, FCB Health, which is a much larger uh, cousin of FCB New York, they have a very robust internship program. Uh, I think this year they're looking at bringing in 40 interns uh, across disciplines. So I also think that, you know, a lot of these things are posted publicly. I think FCB Health certainly, you know, puts the word out there. Uh, and my guess is that we will do like we did last year, wait till the very last minute um, and then decide we will hire uh, interns. And I think also uh, last year we did everything remotely. You know, it, that was kind of what was up in the air. So I feel like maybe we have experience in bringing in uh, remote talent. Uh, we hired 10, uh, I think total of 10 interns uh, four or five dedicated to creative. The others were a strategy um, account. We also had new business. Um, and it turned out to be a really wonderful experience. And we all dealt with the fact that not everybody was in New York, let alone going to be on site. You know, it's it was interesting. Moving to the model of working remotely changed a lot. Um, but I think the agency world has really shown that we can persevere through this. And I think that was tantamount to what you just said is like, you know, last year, nobody really knew if the internship programs were going to happen because first we had to see if we could work remotely. And then we were like, wait a second, we've got this. We know how to do this. This is working. Um, and so I think, you know, from my perspective, I, the, the nature of the internships have just changed a little bit. They're a little bit they're less structured, they're a little more off the cuff, they're a, a, a little more fun if you ask me because they're kind of coming about um, as we can make them happen. And so, Sasha, interestingly enough, I know that you work across with several different agencies um, in your own business. And so I'm just wondering, I know that that's probably not what they're bringing you in for, but are you starting to hear rumblings in the industry of internships popping up um, at some of the clients that you work with? It's, it's a really interesting point is what one thing I was going to jump on is I do what we're seeing here is there's a big uh, I, I'm sure the, Fifi and Courtney and Emily you probably know too, there's there does seem to be a big push to hire right now and since the fourth third and fourth quarter the marketing industry unlike previous difficult times is in a much better position than a lot of other industries so you're seeing a push for hiring and one area I do think that could be good to look at for people for internships as well um, it's a little bit out of our, our typical range that we'd have, um, but where we've seen sort of these sort of growth industries where companies may just need help because there are these areas or fields that are expanding, you know, one area that we've all of a sudden uh, as a search firm have, have gotten work for are places such as esports and esports marketing. I, I, you know, at, at, at 48 years old, I literally know nothing about esports. It's totally perplexing to me. But people that are uh, of, of your generation here know this intrinsically. And I think these companies are looking for people and are needing help. And you're going to have just in intrinsic knowledge that could be appealing to some of these organizations. Even if some of these places are 10 to 50 people, they're going to need help. And if you have certain sort of uh, hard skill sets that you can present, it's worth reaching out to some of these owners. A couple of places I thought of that have popped in my head. There's a, there's a fitness app in LA called Zwift, Z-W-I-F-T, that seems to be growing. And another one here in New York called Obey, they're Our Body Electric. I have no idea if, if what they are needing specifically, but I know that they're short, they're short on people, they have less funding, and there might be a better chance of you looking some of these places up and just reaching out and say, hey, these are some skills that I have. I can help you with this. They may respond to that. Um, and I think of companies, I know they've gotten a bit bigger, but Lemonade, but there are quite a few places in that sort of 10 to 50 person place where it's maybe a little bit of the wild west, but they might present sort of real opportunities to jump in and, and reach out. Um, that's, that's, what I, that's what I've sort of seen in a couple of areas that might be worth looking at. And so building on that, I'm just wondering, are, is the nature of the internships shifting? Like from your perspective, are, is it more competitive and are there less internships? And that's going to lead to my next question. So I'm just curious from your perspectives, are there just as many as you've always had or are you guys seeing a smaller number this year? Well, I would say that, you know, we had a relatively small number last year compared to, as I said, FCB Health had 40 interns. Uh, we had four in creative uh, and probably the other ones, you know, the other six, we had a total of 10 interns. 
Um, I would imagine we might mirror that and maybe have a few more only because our agency has grown so much. Uh, while we've all been in so off site, we've been hiring. So maybe we would have more interns. Um, but again, that's from an FCB New York point of view. And so that's exactly it. So I kind of wanted to, you know, message to this, this audience that we have right now is the nature for me, what I'm seeing is the nature of internships have really changed. Um, it's for us at HUGE, we typically have, you know, we, our most junior employees have three to five years of experience um, to walk in the door. Um, but that is not saying that we're not hiring those people. So we've actually just brought back um, HUGE Schools. Uh, it is a program we used to run in the past um, and have brought it back. I guess, uh, I think this is new after four years of not running it and the entire agency is extremely excited. Um, it's actually a program that's not necessarily your typical internship. It is geared at people who want to learn about uh, experience design and UX. Um, and it's more of a training program. Uh, it's definitely uh, targeted for inclusion. Um, we are noticing that there is a severe lack of representation um, across the board in, in the design community. So what we wanted to do was uh, target underrepresented groups, but also target people who may not have formal education and may not have been able to break into our industry in the past. And the idea is it's a 10 week program um, and we are going to train and pay. So it's a paid internship program or a paid school, if you will. And we're asking you know, people to express their passion for um, why they wanna make this change into this industry. And it doesn't, you don't have to have had any prior design experience, you don't have to have worked in this industry, have uh, you know gone to a four-year college. We just wanna see that passion and how it manifests. And so we're gonna actually open that up for enrollment um, in the next week. So I'm definitely encouraging everybody on this call to please um, check out Huge's social channels, our career site, it's going to launch. And we're gonna have a two week promo around the launch. And then we're gonna have uh, a two week uh, moment for applications. And we're gonna pick out, we don't wanna see resumes. We wanna see like video clips and um, any kind of creative thing that you can put together, whether it's in the form of a deck or it's the form of like a voiceover, whatever it is you wanna send us um, to kind of showcase why you think that you would be great at design and design thinking. Um, but that's also to bring new, fresh talent into the industry, because I, I've noticed that there's a lot of um, basically shifting around of the, the talent that exists instead of us opening the gates to add new talent. So that's something that we're doing. Um, but in addition to that, and I know we've all shared some success stories, I've seen some really amazing uh, situations in which people have come to, to the agencies with um, more or less a, a real desire to work in a particular place. And uh, Phoebe and Emily, you guys both had candidates who kind of fought their way in, in a kind of an unconventional way. So I think in this crazy competitive landscape, I'd love for you guys to chat about stories of how people have broken in, what they have done to change the game for themselves and what they've done to really stand out. So any tips you have for this group of like, how do you stand out? How do you get recognized? And what are those moments where you've actually made space for those, those people to enter the industry? Well, I will uh, start off if that's okay, Emily. Uh, uh, one thing, and it was, it's funny, I was actually thinking about this person, how she got our attention. Uh, it would not be as effective today since we were on site and she did something that was so unusual at that point. She used snail mail. Well, we can't do that right now because no one's going into their office to pick up their mail, but this can be done digitally. What she did was she created something that basically said, I know you get people all the time, et cetera, et cetera. She put in a little creative thing that she had uh, designed that she wrote that became a really fun thing that we could pass around the office and look at. It. Um, and basically she would ask a question in this wonderful little thing she sent out. And no matter what you answered, the answer had to be, her answer came up as hire Anjali. <laughs> so she got our attention. Uh, she also, interestingly, and this does not work for everyone, at that point, she had her own YouTube channel where she dressed up as her mother, uh, which was also very creative. Um, it was quite brilliant and stand up, but really well done. But it was very much her personality. And you thought to yourself, you know, this is a creative person. This is someone who's ambitious. She's gotten past all these other people. We did hire her. 
Um, she's now uh, either, she started as an art director. She decided she was a writer. She was so creative. We said, okay, we want to keep you. You can be a writer. Uh, and now she's at least a senior copywriter and probably going to get a job as an ACD. She's a star. But the point is she went way extra than anybody else did. Um, and I think that uh, I want to hear Emily, but I, I know Courtney and they actually know the story about uh, someone who not only wanted to get the internship as a writer, um, and she did know one or two people in the agency, she had them go to bat for her. Um, and she made herself very present. She became our copywriter in, uh, intern. Um, and ultimately, basically, uh, we sent our interns computers when the internship was over, everybody sent them back. She continued to lobby for a job. She reached out to everyone from the chief creative officer. Uh, I think she even may have gone as far as the CFO. Uh, she just didn't give up, even though we told her, we do not have a job. We don't have a junior job. Well, guess what? She got hired. Uh, she made herself known. She had contributed. She jumped in on every meeting as an intern and she gave her ideas out, which can be a kind of daunting thing when you're presenting in front of a chief creative officer. She was there. And ultimately when we hired her uh, and we announced it to the agency, of course, all remotely, basically she reintroduced herself and said, and that's why I didn't send my computer back. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> and, and she's still working for you guys. Yes. She's fabulous. In fact, she is, as I said, she was real. She was an intern hired as basically a junior copywriter. Uh, she's so ambitious. She is working with a senior art director who's more experienced and they're a great team. I and I think that she was fearless. And, and that's what I think it takes. I think, honestly, um, we had a very unique situation as well. Um, we did not have internships last year, but like I said, they're out there. So, right. so please be looking and be creative about how you approach it. Much to Sasha's point was where you can start to look at some of the smaller, more nimble shops where you right. can kind of position yourself. Um, we actually had a, a young man by the name of Eugene. Um, he's actually still in school and he is also still employed with Huge. Um, he uh, had a great idea for Spotify which is one of Huge's biggest clients. And he said, hey, I've got this great idea. I want to share it with you guys. And so we said, wow, he's already got this amazing idea. How wonderful would it be if we could have him work on it? So he happened to just reach out to um, an account director that you know was also from London, which is where he's based. And he kind of just positioned it like, I would love to share my ideas. And we thought that they were fantastic. And we all kind of leaned in and said, well, how do we make this happen? And so I think there's a lot of creation of space for the right talent. So if you're willing to put yourself out there, um, you know, I say go that route. And I would even go one step further is to say, of course, you're asking the recruiters, and this is great, we're of course going to chat with you and talk to you. But like, if you can start to get your work in front of creatives, and I say this probably every time, but like, start to reach out to the people that you admire that are doing the campaigns, go to the one club site, the one club literally posts absolutely everything that has won an award. And you can go back through the through the archives. And so any any campaign that resonated with you, it's so much easier to reach out um, when you're inspired and when you have something that you really want to work on. And then I say, go find the team that works on it. Pretty much everybody on LinkedIn has the clients that they're working on. And I say, start there. Don't and you can start at the top. You can, of course, reach out to the most senior person, but you might even have, you know, some, you might get better advice from the person. So if you're trying to be an art director and you reach out to somebody who's, you know, an ACD or a senior art director, chances are they are actually empowered to be hiring their own team right now. And so, you know, you might even be, instead of, you know, an internship, you might land a full-time job. Um, so like, that would be my kind of advice. But Emily and Sasha, do you have some advice um, for how you can kind of differentiate and reposition yourself to get noticed? Well, one of the things that I... Uh first of all, Courtney, everything that you're saying, I think I 100% agree with. I think that you have to find out who's doing the work that you really, really admire. But then I want you to take it one step further. I want you to find out about that person and make a connection. This business is a business about connections. And then when you make a connection or you find out some information, then I want you to utilize it to for good 
to the best of your ability to get your work out in front of them so that so, to that creative so that you can be seen and considered for a potential uh, opportunity. Years ago, and it's my favorite story, but years ago I had in my night class, I had a young creative team and they wanted uh, the internship over at Droga. And so they found out who the recruiter was and they did a whole bunch of research on her. They found out, they found her name, they found out that she liked uh, Tater Tots and she was a huge Beyonce fan. And they produced three short videos about Tater Tots and Beyonce and hired them for the internship program. Well, everybody else, all of their peers, all of their, you know, all of their other students, their classmates were like really hella jealous and said all kinds of things like, oh, that's so ridiculous and that's so creepy. But guess what? They got the internship. They got the internship that was years ago. They are now senior level creatives at Droga. I think that story shows perseverance. I think it shows creativity. I think it shows chutzpah. Uh, it, is, it is one of my very favorite stories. You have to make a connection. If you can't make a connection with a recruiter or a managing director, then how are you gonna make a connection to your clients, right? Then the other thing I think is really important because I'm finding that these days, a lot of young creatives are so busy working, 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 working. So when I ask them the question of what's your side hustle? What are you passionate about? What do you like to do? What don't get caught up in the terminology that I'm using because I'll get, I don't like that word passion project. Well, I don't care if you don't like it. Understand what I mean by it. What I mean by it is what are you doing that is so creative that is different from your every day? The thing that fills your heart because that thing about filling your heart, if you can touch somebody else's heart with that, then you've got an opportunity for, for an internship or for a job. This is a business about connection, intellectual connection and spiritual connection, heartfelt connection. Wow me with something that you love to do because it ain't gonna be on IBM. It's not gonna be on Ikea. I don't wanna see the stuff that I've seen over and over again. I wanna feel something about you as an artist, whether it is you as a writer or whether it is you as a, a tech designer or it is you as a graphic artist or art director. So your passion, that is really going to, to get you seen and also making a connection. That works for me. I couldn't agree more. And I love when I see somebody's passion in their portfolio as well, because I'm I, when I'm looking at a, cor a creative portfolio, I'm looking to see your side hustles, your photography skills, yes. the things you do on, you know, that you really, you know, take care and passion in, in your weekends. Like, what is that? And how is that showing up? It doesn't just have to be, you know, client work. And, you know, as interns, you're not going to have a lot of client work. You're going to have a student portfolio. So try and make it as outstanding as possible. Um, and Courtney, can I say this? To yeah. the student portfolio, you're working on the same briefs that everybody else in your class is working on it. So maybe there is a slight different insight that maybe you've picked up on it, but it's those passion projects that are really going to get you seen. And my CCOs are actually asking for that. They're asking me to find people who are interested in photography, are interested in animation. They're asking for those other interests now. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, switching gears a little bit, um, and, and Sasha, I'll ask you this because you're working with so many different agencies. Um, but do you, and this is actually, you know, several people have asked this in the Q&A, um, but the remote landscape, is that now yeah. making it easier? Because will we, like, you know, do you think that companies are looking for people to come back to working on site or is there more opportunity for remote? You know, I think it's one of those things that in theory, yes, um, I think companies are open to it. Uh, and I think there, that opens a lot of opportunities. What I would say is that ultimately um, companies do want whenever this sort of uh, one of this sort of passes, ideally they'd love to have people 
uh, move to wherever. But I think in the short term, I think particularly for internships, I think that that does open the geography quite a bit. Maybe you're bilingual. Well, hey, maybe let's say you 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 speak. Polish, um, and you know, you maybe you, you reach out to some some agencies in Poland because you, know, you might, especially maybe you're maybe you're a writer, or a strategist, and you could you can you know, do double work on that, or maybe there's other places that would allow you or be more open to looking at somebody that could do remote work as a um, as a as a um, an intern or a student. Um, one thing is is always trying to figure out what problem in those situations, what problems can you solve? And I think if you're if you have a different linguistic skill that might open up other areas or other geographies for you as well too. And w- one thing I, I noticed and this this actually worked on me over the holidays is um, somebody reached out to me and I just happened to be because there was nothing else to do sitting around at home and somebody messaged me. Um, and, and I think there's uh, during an, an, an off time and usually I probably wouldn't respond because it wasn't really directly in the type of field and area I recruit in, but guys sent a note. I kind of wrote them back and I think maybe because I was a little bit bored, we kind of wrote back and forth and I wound up giving them some suggestions and some help. One thing I'd say, there's also at times to reach out. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's reasonable even on to shoot people notes on maybe it's on a Friday afternoon or, or a LinkedIn message over the weekend. You can test out different times to see what people's responses are. I think right now, a lot of people are their their Monday through Sundays doesn't differentiate that much. So sometimes they might be bored doing nothing and they might have more time to look at things when you write or, or try to get out in contact. And what I would say is, what we say is recruiters is always you increase your rate of failure. If you reach out to three places, meet out to, you know, the more places you reach out to, the better. And I think one thing too, is when people are looking for internships and places, the the key part is like, where can you learn? And you might often find, maybe you go to, let's say, uh, do an internship on a, let's say a a farm agency or a a very hardcore B2B CRM account. Well, the people you might work for there might teach you more and you might learn more from them. That's going to help you as you, you know, when you go forward to other places, then say, if you get into a high flying place where there's a million other people and they're just, you know, not getting the time with somebody. Um, If you can find people that will take the time and to help you get better, even if it's, you might say is not where you ultimately will want to be. These are early opportunities and learning, the more you can learn and learn from that person that has more value. I would say there are people that are very successful in the industry, but they may not always be the best teachers. And if you can find somebody that is willing to take the time and teach you that, that, uh, that I think it becomes more priceless because they're going to make you better. You know? Ab- absolutely. And, and from Huge's perspective, I will say that we are very open to hiring um, remotely. It's a case by case basis as as we're going right now. So not every position can be remote forever because you know it might just be who's client facing and who's not. But for a lot of these junior positions, I'm definitely you know advising start to reach out. I mean we're going to be in this pandemic for a while, um, and so until everybody's vaccinated, and so there's a plenty of opportunity to start working, improving your value, whether or not it's in the city that you live in. As long as you can keep the hours of operation that are required for the job, um, you know. I say go for it. And my other my other piece of advice here is really to start exploring not just internships. Start looking for freelance because right now I can speak yeah. from the point of the the uptick that we have seen at Huge um, in terms of digital work. I mean, obviously, a lot of us moving into the pandemic, we have seen that you know there's a, a, a heavy need for website redesigns and mobile applications and all sorts of product design. Product design in you know, in every area, it's exploding. So if you are a person that has that kind of skill where you've looked at UX and visual design and, um, you know, anything in that kind of space, there's a lot of opportunity and start to open yourself up to freelance because agencies are willing to take a chance right now. The work is rolling in. We need people to do that as well. So position yourself as a freelancer. Like if you don't see um, an internship program at the agency you want to work at, um, but you still want to work and you can do it, I, you know, I say position it like I'm willing to work for freelance and I'm willing to, you know, uh, be a, 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 try, try it out. Like, try me. Why not try me out? Um, you know, Emily and Phoebe, how do you guys feel about, you know, people reaching out on a freelance basis? Is that helpful for you guys? We're always looking for freelance, always. So, and, and, but here's the thing. We don't, like, I can't say, you know, uh, definitively, when we need the freelance, we do take it as you know, uh, uh, you know, as as we need it. But I think it is a fantastic idea. There are so many more opportunities out there. Everything that Sasha had said prior, um, 
definitely try and look at those other companies that you would have never have thought of. Don't just concentrate on big companies or even the mid-sized companies. Look for uh, the online companies, the uh, internal studios for different brands, and definitely freelance gig. You just have to like expand your mind as to where it is that you can take this career. So I totally agree with you. Yeah, I agree with that too. I do think that for, from my experience at FCB New York, our freelancers generally aren't straight out of school. It happens. We have done that. We've hired someone freelance who had just uh, graduated and uh, she is on staff. But I would say for the most part, my experience has been that with freelance, it's people who have a little bit of experience uh, and not necessarily an agency experience. If it's a designer, you could have been in a design house or uh, more and more. I think that people should also be looking beyond the agency. Uh, look at how many people, you know, Facebook, people have gone over there. They freelance, they get on staff, uh, Spotify, a lot of those places are they are bringing in their own creatives. Um, so I would say expand as much as you can the base of where you're looking. Absolutely. I mean, and, and there's all sorts of creative opportunities to get in. I mean, the One Club has, um, of course, you know, their creative program that they're, they're actively helping mentor and train um, people who want to get into the industry. Uh, Google, one of our biggest clients, is creating a certificate program. So if you hadn't had this experience prior, you can now, as long as you complete all of the coursework, which we're vetting now, um, it'll be for UX, tech, and PM, um, you will get a certificate uh, of approval that you have finished it. Um, and I think that these are some of the ways that you can open the doors for yourself um, to get in. And even if that could be, even if you just want, you have the integrated background, you've done that side of the world, but you're seeing the digital landscape, you know, just booming. You know, there's an opportunity to learn those skills in UX and visual design um, that are going to apply, you know, to a digital approach. Um, so I'm definitely suggesting that people get out there and start learning because those opportunities quite often, even if it's just an educational program, you're going to walk out of there with a portfolio um, and something you might not have had skills in before. Um, so, I mean, definitely, and I would say our freelancers are also typically a little bit more seasoned, but I, I say in the case of my friend Eugene, who is freelancing for us because we didn't have an internship opportunity, we kind of created a freelance opportunity to bring him into, you know, him and his ideas um, into huge. Um, and so, I mean, now I know that we're, you know, a little bit past halfway through this chat, and I definitely want to get to some of the questions that have been coming through with the Q&A. Um, and so, you know, I, I think we've... A lot of people wanted to know how we've discussed about how you do networking in this time of COVID. Um, so, I mean, other than, and how are pe people reaching out? Do you guys have any advice on how you should approach um, a hiring manager or a recruiter or what that looks like? Well, I think, you know, I'll, I'll start with that is I think that, um, I'm going to say, contrary to what Sasha was saying about days of the weeks when to approach, uh, I would say recruiters for the most part. Yes. Um, now, I always offer people, I say, not that you want to, I am available to chat with you in the evening or over a weekend because I want to expand, you know, the invitation, basically. I'll try to work with your schedule. As a recruiter, I would say that the one day I would recommend that you do not reach out to a recruiter would be Monday. That's just me. I mean, there was one Monday uh, where I stopped counting in the morning that 60 emails had come in. And I thought, whoa, that's a lot of emails on a Monday morning. So, and I think because we are remote, I have sent, there's been an exponential increase in the amount of emails. I'd love to know if, you know, you've all experienced the same thing. Uh, so I would just say, you know, the other thing is in our agency, I will tell you that people, and this has been covered before, but I would emphasize it, that uh, people reach out to our creative people, uh, you know, interns, beginners, they want to get in front of somebody. Uh, and I will say for the most part, I think almost everyone in the agency will then forward it to me and say, this person reached out to me, they look really interesting. So then it's in my court. And I think it's mm -hmm. a good thing uh, to that point of, you know, reach out to people that whose work you love, and they will uh, hopefully then give it to a recruiter. 
Absolutely. I, I completely agree on that front. Um, I, I, it always filters to me. And a lot of times I don't actually respond, which is terrible, but know that if you've sent it to me, it has gone to the correct recruiter. So I try and encourage everybody, if you're looking at somebody and they have a global title, probably not your first go-to, but they are probably going to get it into the right hands. So go ahead and send it to them. But also it's more of like an and situation. Look for the recruiter that you think is applicable. If you see somebody who's like, I recruit for strategists, I recruit for PMs, uh, of course, and you're a strategist and a PM, send it to that person. You know, I've got my creative recruiters and they have creative recruiter in their title. So like, if you're sending it to me, send it to me, but also send it to them. Um, you know, that's always my, my go-to. A couple more people don't bombard the world, but figure out who you think might be the right recruiter. Like if you're a UX designer and they're the senior UX recruiter, go, go send it to them. <laughs> like they're the right person. Emily, what is I, your take on that? I forgive me. This is Melody and she does not leave her mommy alone. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm a founding partner with AIR, and AIR is uh, a collective of um, recruiters. We're about, I think, about 125 recruiters representing maybe about uh, 60 uh, agencies or, and like private recruiting uh, consultants. And, and then also we have um, maybe about another 30 who are just like, you know, pledge members. And so I would say to you, if you're looking for a recruiter that belongs to a particular company, go on to the website. It's weareair.org. And, um, and just look at the list. It, it tells who, who's with what company. And that might be really helpful for you. Uh, in terms of when to reach out, we are overwhelmed. Uh, LinkedIn actually is surprisingly easier for me. Um, my inbox, because uh, we're Ogilvy, we're at Ogilvy and we're at on Outlook, it is horrible because when your email comes in, everything after it pushes it down. And then sometimes I don't see any of those emails. Uh, sometimes I try to get up early on a Saturday and look through things. But for some reason, I'm, I can get to uh, emails faster on LinkedIn. You just got to try your luck, kids, okay? There's no good time. There's no great time. I do wish, I want you to understand this. Recruiters are human beings too. We've got family responsibilities. We're dealing with snowstorms and outages and hiring managers that are giving us mandates and then pulling them away from us and we're dealing with a lot of stuff. So you want a job and you are desperately looking for a job and we really, really, really want to help you. But sometimes we too are overwhelmed. So I just have to just beg for your forgiveness and patience with us, okay? Don't take anything personally. If we don't get in touch with you, just understand, you know, maybe they're going through something right now or they're dealing with something right now. And then you know, send me another email, say, hey, hi, you know, I said, don't say, please don't ever say, I sent you an email two months ago, and you did not respond. That's, that's the worst, because as soon as you do that, that's contentious. And now we're maybe I don't want to work with you. Okay, and that's honest. All right. But just be patient with us as we are patient with you. Okay. I love that. And so Emily, that brings me to a question that's in our chat. Over under, do you want to receive cover letters? Because I know that I do not. I want you to be quick and witty and write me three lines and send it over. I need three lines. I agree with you. Give me like, and so now here's where the creativity comes in. If you can describe yourself or what you need in such a, in an intelligent, witty, succinct fashion, I'm all about you. You know what I mean? I don't, don't have time or even the mental capacity these days to process long drawn out texts about, you know, you're the first time you ever saw an ad. I'm sorry, I don't care. All right, <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
I want to hear your creativity. Talk to me. Don't tell me. I don't care if you want to, that you've always thought about working at Ogilvy. All right. I want to hear about what you feel like you're going to bring. I want to hear about your creativity. Make me excited. Is that wrong to say? I'm just trying to be honest because I don't want to read paragraphs upon paragraphs stuff. I, I couldn't agree. I was going to say what I might recommend. Uh, and I think it dovetails with what we're all saying about, you know, the brevity of the message. I yeah. think if you can put a few words into the subject line that gets my attention, I might read the email a little bit faster. Uh, you know, few words, subject and be creative, come up with something that's going to grab somebody's attention, they will be more likely to read the email. I completely agree. So people want to know what when is peak time for recruiting for internship programs? What do you guys think? Now, <laughs> now because because if you think about it, MAPE is is just getting just starting to to do their push, right? So uh, yeah, uh, we just did um, a screening and um, and interviews, preliminary interviews before they open up the portal. I think they open the portal February 9th. And so what I'm trying to do is match uh, the other internships with the timing of that program uh, and then bring in everyone in around June. Okay, and if we run the program for if this this year, we used to do it like all year round, but if we only run our internship program for three months, everybody is out by September. Okay, unless they have really proven themselves and we have the facility to pay them. All right, um, that's another issue. It, it's not just about getting you in, there's you, look kids, follow the money, read the, read the magazines, look at the trades, see who is doing what, see where the money is, because if there's money someplace, then there's a place for you. If someplace is losing money, it might possibly not be a place for you, but, uh, but I digress. So I'm planning around like make schedule. I'm starting to look at books now. Yep. And I would say huge, we're about to go live. I mean, like in next week, you will see it on probably every form of media that we have about our program. Um, so I want, you know, everybody to be on the lookout because what we're doing is we're going to do a big hype boost so that we can garner the interest. And then we're going to open it up for two weeks to apply. So you will literally only have a short window to apply for it. Um, but we want to give people time to prepare for it because we're not asking for a resume. So we want to give people time to think about this idea. So there's going to be like a hype boost, but we want to give everybody equal opportunity of getting their foot in the door and into the agency. So I say, start planning for it now. Start thinking of those ideas. Start looking at where you want to work, what you want to do. Um, and you know, to Sasha's point, start looking at some of the Maybe uh, areas you might not have explored before, like a lot of client side. I, I, I really think that our clients are doing a great job as well. Um, and starting to look at some of those um, digital, really like heavy digital clients. I know that we had uh, Google, one of them. Um, you know, I, I've been hearing a lot of motion for Shopify. Um, and so I guess, you know, there's other questions about like, even for international students, uh, there was a question in the chat that was asking how easy is it to get an internship um, as an international student, like get an internship in the US as an international student. Um, for that, my piece of advice, and let me know if you guys feel differently, my piece of advice there is find the agency that's in where, where you actually are and then use that because usually we've got agencies all over the place. It's very hard to actually, unless you're on a student visa and you're currently in school in the States, it's a little harder to transition. So like, hey, if you are, you know, at let's say Ogilvy uh, in a different country. Like it's going to be easier to transition once you're already in there. So go get that internship where you're based, where it's been, and then try and transfer with that company. Find a company you love and then transfer. But, you know, Sasha, you might have a little bit more context of just international mobility because I know you work across several markets. Anything that, I mean, I, I do realize that a lot of the things that you're, a lot of the people that you're placing are above the internship level, but do you see mobility um, and are, are companies hiring international, internationally I, on a regular basis? I, I, 
I think when it comes to internship, uh, to your point, I think if you're in country, say like you're a, 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 a foreign national studying in the United States, I think getting an internship is then definitely not, a, I don't think it's as much of an issue. But if let's say you're not in the US, I think, I think it becomes a little harder to get the, the internship here. Then my, 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 my suggestion would be is looking at in, if you're in the EU and EU, um, then I think to, then it's probably open to a fair game wherever in the EU to try to, to land an internship as well too and the other places you can look at is what are some big sort of robust um international market like high expat markets i i think it could be sometimes worth poking around into places like dubai bahrain um where there's just a really high a lot of foreign nationals i do think sometimes uh to emily's point is you know you, you have a short intro but i think it's also very key to highlight you know what maybe what your hard skills or what problems you can solve for organizations if you look particularly for smaller companies you know if you're looking at a place and you, you can say hey i do web design i do i know how to code these are some things that if they like okay we've got an intern or we got somebody we can freelance it's not going to be so expensive we can bring them in you might be somebody they could try out and solve a, a problem for particularly some of these smaller organizations where they don't have a big robust department and, and maybe it's you and the, the the owner that are doing dealing with the sites uh, that kind of that that could be an area to, to definitely look at um and the one thing too is i think you may have said this as well uh, courtney but I, I think it's well worth when you're looking at some of the large organizations, maybe you also reach out to somebody that's, say you're a designer or an art director, reach out to somebody else that's a designer and art director that's maybe just a few years ahead of you because they might be also more more likely to respond and you can they might be able to give you a few tips on your portfolio. Now, they're not going to be able to land you the internship, but at least you're making, to Emily's point, a greater connection um, and a relationship there. And that's, an, at least you can start to talk to a few people in different organizations. And if you, if you connect a person in the organization and that you don't have any luck with the recruiters, well, at least then you have a connection there, you know, so. And uh, to Sasha's point, um, I, I, I taught a course and it was called how to get a job. Um, I taught it for Miami ad school. And you know, my, to Sasha's point right there, I would tell my students every single time, just don't be a jerk because as big as you think that the ad world and design world is right now, it is not. You will see every single person again. So try and make friends. Um, if you get an assignment or an internship, and you know what, you're you know working on the worst banner ads you've ever worked on in your life, do them to the best of your ability. Because I'm telling you, the people that you meet now are actually going to have a say in whether you get that job later. Um, so as we all know, I mean, Emily, TV, Sasha, how, we do, we all know each other. We know each yes. other. We, like they, the one club did not introduce us. This this panel right here, we all know each other. Yes. TV and I are even at sister agencies. Sasha and I sat together um, at one of the award shows. Emily and I go way back to the point where I needed, and don't tell anybody this, I'm just going to tell the world, uh, it was at a previous company, but I needed a loophole. And Emily knew exactly how to get around the legality so that I could run a program I really wanted to do. And she was like, I've got the answer for you. So we all lean on each other. We're friends. And we also, you know, know who's out there who's done something really egregious. So I always say, you know, make friends, do those outreaches like Sasha is suggesting. And like, you know, connect on LinkedIn, tell them you admire your work, ask for feedback on your portfolio from somebody who does the craft that you're doing. Like, you know, I mean, the recruiters can give you so much, but if you want craft advice on how to better, you know, scale your portfolio, Start asking your design friends, start asking your copywriter friends or make friends and, you know, say like, you know, it's much easier in a non-pandemic world, but invite them for a virtual coffee. People aren't, you know, they've got a little bit of time. They want to help you too. They understand that we're in unprecedented times and they want to see, you know, the, the future of this business succeed. Um, so, and, and just, you know, as we're getting closer to the end, what I wanted to say was people, a lot of people are asking about the content of what should go in their portfolio and like what that portfolio should look like. Um, do you guys have any suggestions on what you like to see? I just said, you know, my thing is, look, okay, aesthetic is, is, is huge. Make it beautiful. If I open it up on my computer, if I open it up on my uh, phone, it, it has to be beautiful. Uh, it has to be, your craft has to be really strong. Um, I'm going to show the, I'm going to show a book that I think is well-designed to uh, 
to one of my managing directors. And then they're going to look at the ideas and they're going to tell me whether or not they like how you have solved the ideas, right? So I need something that will visually pop or excite me or a tagline or something that is going to excite me. And then after that, I need to know what other things that you do. I also will say, I'd love to see your Instagram pages on your uh, portfolios. I'd like to see it, but I don't wanna see those, you know, 1000 selfie pictures with you, you know, posing and I don't wanna see that. I want to see you curate some work that will make me understand who you are as an artist outside of, let's say, the corporate kind of setting. Um, those things are, are really important, important to me because I can get someone to be really excited about you if I'm excited about you. Absolutely. And I, I want to see your design thinking. Huge is a, a, at heart a design agency. And I want to see your design thinking. What part of the project was yours? In school projects, we know a lot of times yes. you're working as a team, as a group. Um, I want to know what, what idea was yours. I want to know the challenge, how you solved it, and what piece of it was yours. What, was, what do you take ownership of? Or I want to know your design thinking and why you thought that that was the right approach. Um, and you know that's what I'm looking for in a portfolio. Uh, and somebody had asked earlier in the chat, um, wanting to know whether we want to see a good mix of digital and traditional. And for my answer there is I want you to be, to, to actually invest in what you're applying for. Know the agency. If they do a mix of digital and traditional, yes. If you're applying for a UX, you know, um, internship, I want you to be design all the way, you know, so just like really investigate the companies that you want to work for work for and structure your portfolio to what you want to do and then target the agencies that do what you ultimately want to be when you grow up. <laughs> yes, you know. I was going to say, absolutely. And, you know, there was a, one of the questions that came up um, was about animators uh, and, you know, in terms of portfolios and skills and when we look at uh, an intern coming in, let's say for design, I want to know that you can animate. I want to know as many skills, give me, you know what, be really direct. You need to have hard skills along with everything else that can be, you know, soft and loving and wonderful and great creativity. But I want to know, you know, if you have a building, I want to know that you have the foundation. Um, I, for one, prefer to see the work, grab the work. I don't particularly love, uh, and we may all disagree on this, uh, when there's an assignment, what the assignment was and the explanation. For me, yeah, I'll look at it, but I really just want to look at your work because your work should be the thing that pops to me and it either solved what the issue was or the problem or the assignment or it didn't. I just want, for me, I just want to see the work. I, I totally understand that. We, yeah, when I said I want to know what the challenge was, I want that in one sentence. Yeah, um, oh, yes. <laughs> one sentence. Yes. Well, as concise as you can be. I mean, we're, we're extremely busy. And right now, I'll just, you know, shamelessly plug that Huge has 200 open recs. And that is created <laughs> by 200. So my team is tired. Um, and so a gentle follow-up is always kind of helpful. Like we're, we're, But when you get aggressive, to Emily's point earlier, it's that's when we're like, we're busy or we don't have the opportunity. And so I think there was a question in, in the channel that asked if, you know, it was okay to ask for feedback on why you didn't get the interview. Um, you know, that's where I'm asking where I would prefer if you were asking a creative friend to say, what does my book look like before you submitted it? Um, we're not, I mean, the, the amount of submissions that we get for internships and like why we started this panel saying how competitive it is, is because we want you to be creative and we want you to stand out. That's already going to be like, oh, this person has shown real, true, like, passion for our agency and they know inside and out why they want to work here. So I also don't like getting these blanket emails, dear Miss Burns, like personalize it a little bit, friends, <laughs> a little bit of personalization. Um, but let's get everybody's closing remarks and hopefully we could just offer, you know, either a piece of advice or a tidbit, however you guys want to, you know, leave things because I know we're about three minutes out and Fifi's got a lot more work to do tonight and so do I and so does Emily and so does Sasha. So we are just, I want to answer any final questions or what, it, what do you want to leave as your parting words of advice? I have a really, oh, I was going to say, this is such a cliche, and I'm going to take just a few words, and then I'm going to turn it over to Emily and Sasha and, you know, Courtney. Um, 
I would say three words. It's three words. Don't give up. Yeah, that's three words. Don't give up. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I mean, and don't. I mean, it, it, there's new opportunities popping up all over. I mean, if anything, it's like the most entrepreneurial moment in history of trying to get a job. So be entrepreneurial. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I want to say I'm jealous of Courtney and the huge school because, I mean, that sounds so phenomenal and it sounds like you're going to have so much fun uh, with that one. And I also want to remind people there are some, I think the one school is accepting applications. I might be wrong, but I think I read that. And then also Kenny Thatcher's uh, organization, uh, 100 Roses from Concrete, you should look into that. There are a number of things. Learn how to use your LinkedIn pages to connect with people uh, and to see what what opportunities are out there. Um, and I and then I have to steal from Fifi because I love her. Don't give up. Just keep trying. Don't give up. I love it, Sasha. Any parting words? Yeah, I would say like when when looking at places is try to sort of organize and put put. I'd say this is maybe a little bit longer than one parting word, but maybe delineate you people that are recruiters, people that are, that are within your hiring managers within your field who you like, and maybe people that are similar to you. And if you kind of increase your, your rate of failure, or you increase the amount of people you contact in each one of these buckets and go about it strategically, that might help you. And that might also give you more options and opportunities. Finally, I think it's also important to know what, what if you reach out is what is your ask? Maybe for recruiters, like, hey, do you have internships? If it is a what happened? I don't know. <laughs> Level. Can you look at my book? You know, that, that's what I would say. So, you know what? Can I just say this? Um, I love the idea of connecting to somebody else in the agency and talking to them because then they'll send the book to me if they like it. And I am very quick to respond to my work colleague. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I have to respond to them. So I think that's an excellent idea. Don't put it all on me. Oh, and the other thing is about Emily, um, what she said really resonated when she said, uh, get to me through LinkedIn uh, versus the, you know, hundreds of emails. Um, and we can't get back to everyone who's going to write to us on LinkedIn, but somehow it, there's an ease to that. And I, I, I haven't figured out why, but I, I will look at who's message, you know, sent me a message through LinkedIn. And for the most part, for the most part, I respond. <laughs> And, uh, you know, on that note, I, I mean, I'm just going to shamelessly say it, but my email is physically like in my LinkedIn. So if you've connected with me, like you can also find me any possible way. I'm not saying I want a hundred emails. I want something pointed, but I want to encourage the, the group that's on the phone, start to really do your homework, do your research on all of these people, yeah. pull down the about section, see what they hire for, see what they're looking for, see if their email is there, see if you can write something crafty. And again, I mean, from my perspective, look at the what the recruiter or the person that you're trying to reach out to does. Like they, they should say it on their LinkedIn. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to add one last thing that people may not think of, but I've noticed that more and more people are posting jobs on Facebook. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, we actually did hire a senior PM uh, because she, you know, I posted something at one point and I thought, I'm just going to put it in New York city jobs, whatever, who knows we get something we do. We don't, we don't. Um, she answered, we hired her. Wow. So, I love that. Black Phoebe. Yes. Oh. I mean, here are all the black people. Yeah. Um, I, they put that out there uh, as the Slack channel. I joined it. I was desperate oh. for designers, and I got a wonderful, right. wonderful group of people reaching out to me when I needed the most. <laughs> yeah, no, Slack is great. It was, it, yeah. I mean, any Slack channel, I'm sure the One Club has one too. I just happen to have great success. Um, and I was really looking at my teams and trying to, um, you know, create. Uh, an inclusive representation. And so I found that to be a really lovely model. So start to check those Slack channels for design in your areas because all of my designers are in those Slack channels too. So they're literally in there and they're like, send, they'll be sending me talent all day long. And I will just put out the call to action. Like, hey, I need product designers. I need visual designers. I need them like 
like yesterday and I put it to my whole network. And so what's interesting about that I do at Huge, so every single week when I have my creative crit meeting where we go over all the work, I also share all the open positions with them. So as you're reaching out, that's fresh in their mind too. So send it to the people you admire. So I know we're at time and you guys are busy, but um, you know, happy to turn it back over to Lou um, to let us close out the, the panel. Yeah, no, thank you guys all so much for joining today, all who were participants. And thank you so much to our panel, Courtney, Emily, Fifi, and Sasha. We love you guys. You guys are the best. You guys gave some great advice. Um, if you guys have any questions about membership, feel free to uh, email myself or Jenna. And yeah, we'll see you guys at the next panel. But thank you all so much. This was amazing. Thanks, One Club. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, One Club. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.